What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic, and we're back with another awesome creation that's once again using some more of that awesome logic from the mod pack. Guys, I've been falling in love with all this number logic, and just the stuff we can do with this number logic is just quite impressive, and today we're looking at something that I think is really, really awesome, and it's sort of a good test piece into moving into more advanced creations that use the same method and that is this awesome gps guided explosive drone delivery service exclusive through amazon we can actually send this drone to any destination gps coordinate we want and then of course let it fly there and it will uh it will unload its cargo and deliver it to the target and then it will actually come back and land tracking itself here at this location here but before we look at this and actually watch it do its thing. Uh, we're going to just take a look at one simple thing that makes this whole thing possible. And that's these thrusters here. And these are actually vertical gimbal thrusters. So no matter how you tip this creation, you can see the thrusters always aim straight up. And why that's useful is because we don't actually need to really stabilize the creation as much anymore. You can see if we turn this on, it actually will center itself. And even though this is an offset weight... It'll sort of adjust itself with gravity. Now, the only downfall with these thrusters is if you want to change the power level on them, you have to feed them with a number input. So, of course, we mounted four of those onto this awesome little quadcopter, and we'll just disconnect this from the platform. It does talk completely wirelessly with remote control blocks, you can see. So, it actually has a fair amount of information going on here. So, there's actually one receiver. You can see the blue zero-channel receiver that receives the instructions from the sort of control center as to where this thing needs to move and then it's got three blue transmitters one for the x coordinate one for the y coordinate and one for the z coordinate or the height originally i had looked at combining all this into one data stream i know a lot of people have been asking about encryption and decryption with the computer and messages and there are ways to compress the entire message into one number and we can look at that in another episode but i didn't want to do that on this build here mainly because it does take a fair amount of logic blocks and math blocks to set up that encryption and it would just, you know, take up way too much space on this quadcopter. So really simply, it's a quadcopter where we uh, we set our coordinates. Now, I think negative um, 60, 24 is over there. You know what? I, I don't really know where the coordinates are, but we'll just pull out our handy-dandy portable GPS. I know there's no easy way in Scrap Mechanic to see what your GPS coordinates are, so I built a really simple portable GPS, which I'll upload to the workshop along with that creation. And really simply, we can just place this here and uh, it'll tell us our X, Y, and Z coordinates. And it's based on the position of these three here, so around this one block. And it's just telling us X is at negative 1, Y is at 89, and Z is at 1. And of course, it's actually rounding it to the nearest block, because that GPS there rounds to the nearest block as well. So it just kind of makes it a little bit easier. But anyways, we'll just uh, we'll put it right here. So that's what, 30, 3192? 3192, okay. So 3192. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to have this drop its uh, target right there. 3192. The Z coordinate doesn't matter because, I mean, you know, it's going to it's gonna drop down. So we'll just uh, come in here. We can crank this back up. So let's bring this back up to uh, 30. Bring this down. 31. There we go. And uh, this was 92. So you can see we've really simply we've just got some buttons for each of the different coordinates, X and Y. You can go up to, I think it's negative 2800 to positive 2800 or negative 3,000 or something like that. So you can really go the entire distance of the map. Now, of course, if you give it a coordinate that's outside the map, it'll just fly into the wall because it's constantly trying to get there. But you can see we've got the X and Y coordinates of the destination. Now, this green button will launch the drone. You can see here, this tells us the drone's position. So the drone itself right now is at negative 158 at Y equals 3 and at Z equals 7. And what the drone will do is when we hit this green button, the green light will come on to let us know the drone is active. It will fly up to 2,000 blocks in height. Now, the skybox, I think, is like 3,100 or 3,200 or something like that. But it flies up to 2,000 blocks in height, and it tries to stay between 2,000 and 2,100 blocks in height. And the reason it goes that high is that no matter where you send it on the map, it will clear stuff like that really tall xylo there or whatever. It goes so far up. But anyways, we'll press this button. We can see the, uh, the drone starts. There we go. There's our Amazon care package. Perfect drone delivery service. Now, the drone always keeps itself oriented north that way. I think that's zero degrees on the compass, I guess, would be north, if that's what you want to call it. But it always just keeps itself aligned dead straight north, and it just kind of slides around. It doesn't rotate itself other than to rotate itself back to staying north. And it just kind of makes the controls a little bit easier. So you can see there, still going up. Hasn't really moved in the X and Y at all. Still negative 158 and 3. 
And then once it gets above 2000, it'll kick in the directional controls and it'll start moving itself towards X equals 31, Y equals 92. And then of course, marking our current position here uh, for, for later actually, because the drone will fly itself to those coordinates, drop off its payload and then come back right here like a good drone. Of course, we'd have to just delete it and spawn a whole new one, but really, really good stuff. So you can see here we're above 2100 blocks, so it's going to just start floating down and floating up. It does have a five block tolerance on any coordinate you give it, so it doesn't go to the exact coordinate because it's just ridiculous. I mean, you have to basically constantly fight the fact that there's thrust and momentum going on. So as long as it's within five blocks, it considers it okay. And when both coordinates are within five, you can see this piston will slide out and it'll drop the payload. So there we go. Boom. And it's dropped the payload. And now the drone should be coming back to our position. So where is that? Okay. So you can see there way up there. There's the bomb coming down now. And uh, we've got our drone. It's slowly going to move its way back to our here coordinate. You can see it's adjusting itself again. And then it'll come land itself right near here. And there's our bomb. Perfect. Now, of course, there are a few things going on here. I do have this on the test branch. So, of course, there's momentum as well. So, as the drone is moving slightly, momentum plays a big role. The bomb can move ever so slightly. Now, of course, it does kind of stop moving in the X and Y. So, you can see it dropping back down. And then, of course, we can spawn a new one and continue. So, it's really awesome what we can do with the GPS and remote control. Because, obviously... Oh, okay. Well, it was... Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you. And then, of course, we can just delete this one, spawn a second drone, and uh, the channel's already set. You can see it's actually trying to rotate itself back to zero, and we can actually just pick a new target. Now, I think we moved that block slightly. It kind of got half destroyed. So let's actually just put a car down here and see how accurate it is on the car. I know the five block tolerance might be a little bit much because of how high it's dropping the bomb down from, but really I wanted to do this more of a proof of concept build. And in fact, if you're not in the test branch and you're in the old branch without momentum transfer, it's dead on every time. The momentum is what causes the bomb to not necessarily always fall directly on top of the target. But here we go, we'll spawn this truck uh, really simply, and then we'll spawn ourselves a GPS. We'll just weld this into the back here just so we know where the truck's at. And it's... Negative 879. Okay, negative 879. So our drone's still trying to rotate itself. All right, so let's go here. Negative 8, negative 8. Nope, negative. Whoops. Whoops. Negative 8. There we go. And what was it? 79? 79. All right, perfect. And uh, we'll hit that green button. And there goes that drone. Excellent. Another care package. And you can see it just kind of rotate itself back into the right position so it's always aligned north. And it has tons of time to do that before it gets up to the, the correct height. But really cool stuff. Now, of course, you could have multiple drones on the map. You'd have to have a different control station because each drone is sending and receiving data to its own control station. And the control station is doing all the math for that particular drone. So you could paint these different colors or you could hit these buttons, which we're not going to do right now. But we could hit these buttons to cycle the frequencies. And in fact... If you hit this button, it actually just changes the one frequency, which then all these are just added plus one, you can see. So no matter what, uh, uh, you know, we'll just do it quick. You can see zero, one, two, right? They all change. But there we go. We'll leave it there. And uh, hopefully that didn't screw. It didn't drop the bomb. That's good. As long as it doesn't drop the bomb. Of course, this is another one of those builds where it's really awesome to just troll your friends. I mean, if you marked a bunch of GPS coordinates on the map, like, you know, for example, Multiplayer Monday building in the garages, if we had the GPS coordinates of each garage marked, and you fly this up, I mean, your friend is not going to notice that. They're not going to look up and notice this drone. It's going to make no noise from that distance. They're not even going to see the explosive falling. And then all of a sudden, their stuff just going to blow up from an explosive that came out of the sky. And by that time, the drone's already moved out of the way and flown back. So even if you look up, you're going to be like, what, what dropped this bomb? It's just absolutely hilarious. And I think it's just really, really cool. But it really gives us the chance to actually move forward and make more automated vehicles and definitely want to take this sort of same integration and move it into an autopilot type thing now uh the red light is on which means it's dropped the payload oh there's the payload there okay oh yeah blew up the entire back end of the truck that's that's fantastic you know that's pretty accurate i mean the gps was right in the back there again like i said plus or minus five blocks here we go we've got our new drone here so really simply the drone is actually a very very simple system and it has a fair amount of logic and connections in it, but it's actually doing really simple stuff. So it's got its own sort of logic to understand where zero degrees is, and it actually just tries to keep itself between one degree and negative one degree of north, and that's it. So that's why as soon as you deploy it, it'll start spinning right away with these side thrusters. So it's got two thrusters here and two thrusters here, and that just tries to line it up to north. And actually, if we rotate it ourselves, 
There we go. You can see it's actually within one degree of north now, so it'll stop. And really simply, it's done that way because the GPS just slides it into position. The other way to do it is you'd actually have to do math and have the drone align with a specific angle and then go straight in that direction. And our truck is still half destroyed. Now, the drone is actually doing really no work at all in terms of calculating. The only thing that it does is calculate which way north is based on this compass up top. But other than that, it's just got all its GPS coordinates underneath. So it's got X, Y, and altitude. And it's just sending the coordinates of those three pieces of information back through these transmitters into these three receivers here which is then getting picked up and displayed right on this display here now of course these r and d they're rounding the value to the nearest block so we don't have to deal with decimals but that's all we're really doing with GPS coordinates. Other than that, the rest of the logic on the drone here is actually just the binary conversion from the transmitter coming back. All these logic blocks here that are colored actually just convert themselves into a binary number and then get sent back through this one remote control block like we've done before. The drone picks that up, converts it back from a single number into a binary number, which then goes back into the logic, which then of course gives it all its commands. So the drone's movement commands are 100% dictated by these gates here. And in fact, if we hooked buttons up into these, we could manually control the drone. So for example, we hook a button into blue, which is thrust, uh, it'll, you know, we'll give it vertical thrust. Oh, I, I was, I forgot there was a bomb there. That would have been really, really bad. Uh, button into the light blue, I believe, is actually the decoupler. Uh, green is downwards thrust, so it counteracts the forward thrust. We could have, of course, adjusted the power level of these, but I decided to do it, which is a downwards thrust mechanism to make it a little bit easier. And then these four here are actually the move in each direction. And they actually are hooked up into a little bit of a pulsing circuit because these thrusters to move it, even on the lowest setting, were still too much for this drone to handle. So I wanted to really slow them down and have them only pulse. So that way it just kind of very, very slowly will slide the drone into position. And we'll fire that up. So when we hit this green button, all we do is activate a memory bit. And we can hit the green button a million times. But once the memory bit's already active, the green button won't reactivate it. And then really simply, uh, that memory bit tells the drone to start flying upwards, you can see, giving it that blue thrust command. And then once the drone gets to 2,000 blocks in height, there's these two sort of memory comparisons here. Now, really cool with the mod pack, the memory values will store numbers even off the lift. So if you take it, you save it on your lift, you bring it back, the value is still there. So this one's set to 2,000, this one's set to 2,100. And really simply, when it's above 2,000, it can start doing the movement commands through this sort of movement matrix here. And when it's above 2100, it activates the downward thrust to bring it down below that 2100 line. So it just kind of keeps it basically around 2100 blocks, but above 2000 gives it the ability to move. And then really simply, the movement commands, all they're doing is comparing the position you want to go to and the position you're currently in on the drone here. Basically, it's saying if X on the drone is less than X here, go in one direction. If X on the drone is greater than X here, go in the other direction. And then the same thing with the Y coordinates. So really, really simple stuff not really that complicated and then when it comes back to base it does the exact same thing perfect there we go it's actually deployed the payload you can see so once it's close enough to the target it'll actually stretch that out deploy the payload and we should see there we go we should see it coming down there all right let's watch this i think it's gonna hit should hit pretty much dead it looks good oh it's looking really good oh Oh, no, it was a little bit off. All right, I took the wheels off the truck to make sure the truck doesn't move. And actually, you know what? We'll just adjust it a little bit for the coordinates. So let's just uh, take our GPS here, put another GPS there. It's very portable GPS, like I said, uh, really convenient. I really wish there was a way to have this, like, just appear on the screen. But I don't know, maybe there is. Uh, but let's just put this up on the hood here, and we'll just see what our new coordinate is. So what do we got? Negative 1760. See, I feel like we're just off. It, it, there's no way it was 1760 before and I didn't really move the truck see negative that's negative 1760 were we supposed to be negative 11 maybe I I'm not sure negative 11 negative 17 and then 60 all right and is our drone coming back you coming you coming drone yeah yeah you're dropping nope not still haven't lined up yet Fantastic. All right, so we've got another drone. Just again, send it to those coordinates. Of course, let me know what you guys think of this build in the comments down below. There's definitely a lot of things I think we can do with GPS and there's still velocity measurements, acceleration measurements, and all sorts of other things. So I'm really excited for what this, you know, sort of brings to Scrap Mechanic. And obviously this is really, really cool. We could have done this all before with binary logic if there was, you know, an XYZ sort of sensor. But the biggest problem with that would have been actually doing all this math in binary logic would have just been a lot of circuits with a lot more delay and then of course without the remote control glitch we have to actually use the remote control block so really just cool stuff but i will upload this all to the workshop of course 
and uh, I encourage you guys download it, mark out some GPS coordinates, and then you know just have your friends build in certain spots and don't don't tell them about it. But I'll upload the drone and the base station here as well as the portable GPS. And you can see if you just have the delivery drone on its own, you can just keep spawning them as long as you only have one on the map on each frequency at a time. We can of course change the frequency, just make sure there's no overlap. There's literally infinite numbers, so it's it's pretty much awesome. Uh, did it drop the payload yet? No, it didn't. Are you, where are you going? You're going negative 17. Okay, you're not there yet. You're almost at 60 though. You're good. You're within 60. No, still not. So you can see it overshot that. That's why we have the piston there. So it went within the negative 17 and then overshot it. Here we go. Now it's perfect. So now it just dropped. All right, you can see the payload. Again, it's going to be so awesome to troll your friends and just, they won't even see it coming. They'll have no idea. And then the drone runs away. Especially if you have it go way across the map, like completely to the other side of the map. Absolutely awesome. And your friends will just, they'll just be like, what, what just happened? Oh, that just blew up the whole front of the truck. That's amazing. So, of course, it is only dropping a single explosive, but, uh, you know, baby steps, guys. Baby steps. So, of course, it would be cool to have one that can carry more than one explosive. This drone is actually kind of small. It doesn't really do all that much, but it was really just a proof of concept. And, of course, I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. So, let me know in the comments down below. And while you're at it, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we'll see y'all next time.